All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Your problem is in your mind. You have a desire, the realization of which would solve your problem. But when you look at conditions and circumstances as they are, a negative thought comes to your mind and your desire is in conflict with your fear. Your worry is your mind's acceptance of the negative conditions. Realize that your desire is the gift of God. God is the living spirit within you. It's telling you to rise higher in life. It's also saying there is no power to challenge God the living spirit within you. For there's only one power, not two or three or four, just one. And that power moves as a unity, moves as harmony and peace. There are no divisions and quarrels in it. Therefore, all you have to do is tune in on the infinite and let the harmony and the peace and the love of the infinite flow through you. Affirm to yourself, God of the supreme wisdom gave me this desire. and The almighty power is now backing me up, revealing to me the perfect plan for its unfoldment and I rest in that conviction. When worry thoughts come to your mind, remind yourself that infinite intelligence is bringing your desire, ideal, plan, or purpose to pass in divine order. That's supplanting the negative thought. Continue in this attitude of mind, and the day will break, and the shadows will flee away. <clears throat> Some time ago, I interviewed a businessman whose doctor told him that there was nothing wrong with him physically but that he was suffering from anxiety neurosis. Anxiety neurosis is a $25 word for just plain chronic worry. And the word worry, when you translate it from its original radix or root, means to strangle, to choke, which is what man is doing to himself. And this man said to me, every time I pray or think about success, prosperity, and greater wealth, I start to worry about money, my business, and the future. It's wearing me down, and I am so tired. His vision of success and prosperity was thwarted by his chronic worry, and the fretting consumed his energy fruitlessly. It's like a leakage of electricity. You have a short circuit, no light comes on. The way he overcame his anxiety, neurosis, or worry was as follows. He began to have quiet sessions with himself three or four times a day when he declared solemnly, but there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. That's from Job. The Almighty power is within me, enabling me to be, to do, and to have. This wisdom and power of the Almighty backs me up and enables me to fulfill all my goals. I think about the wisdom and power of the Almighty regularly and systematically, and I no longer think about obstacles, delays, impediments, and failure. I know that thinking constantly along this line builds up my faith and confidence and increases my strength and poise. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. As he continued to do this regularly and systematically, you know what happened. These truths enter into his conscious mind and then the brain sends these healing vibrations all over his system. They go into his subconscious mind, and like spiritual penicillin, they destroy the bacteria of worry, fear, anxiety, and all these negative thoughts. In a month's time, he arrived at that awareness of the strength, power, and intelligence which were divinely implanted in him at his birth. He has conquered his worries by partaking of the spiritual medicine of the supreme wisdom and infinite intelligence locked in your subconscious depths. About a year ago, a distraught mother visited me, saying that she was terribly worried about her son in Vietnam. I gave her a specific prayer to use night and morning for herself and for her son. Subsequently, her son returned from Vietnam. He married and settled down and she again came back to see me, just as worried as before. You see, she wasn't worried about the things she said she was worried about. Uh, she was just guilty of plain, downright laziness, apathy, indifference, sloppy thinking, because all she had to do was to tune in on the infinite, which lies stretched in smiling repose, and think godlike thoughts, and all the power of the Godhead flows through these godlike thoughts. In other words, think good and good follows, think evil and evil follows. When your thoughts are God's thoughts, God's power is with your thoughts of good. It's as simple as that. 
Therefore, that's discipline. That's a cleansing of the mind, like you cleanse out your own home and wash the windows if you don't keep your house clean. All sorts of pestiferous insects come in. The paint falls off of the wall. And all manner of things begin to happen because you have to keep cleaning the house, don't you? Well, the house is your mind. You have to keep constantly cleaning it, filling it with truths of God, which crowd out of the mind everything unlike God. She was worried during the second visit that her son may have married the wrong girl. However, she admitted that the girl was a wonderful wife. But she said, all the time I was so worried that their child might be born dead or crippled. But my daughter-in-law has given birth to a perfect child. The mother was then worried about a money shortage in her son's home. This woman was not really worried about what she thought she was worried about. Her actual difficulty was that she had an inward sense of insecurity, she was emotionally immature, and certainly spiritually immature. If she were spiritually immature, she would have sat down and blessed her son and the daughter, realizing God was guiding them, there was right action in their lives, and divine law and order governed them, and divine peace filled their soul, and that God was prospering them beyond their fondest dreams. How then could she be worried about them? If you're worried about your son, your daughter, your business, why don't you change that and say, why don't I bless my son, my daughter, my husband, my wife, my business? Why don't I pour out a benediction upon them? Why don't I claim what's true of God is true of them? Why don't I do it? Am I lazy, indolent, apathetic, listless? Am I a sloppy thinker? Do I have a dirty mind? Or am I willing to do that which is right? Therefore, if you are, you'll say, well, my husband, if you're worried about your husband, is God's man. The peace of God floods his mind. The love of God flows through him. He's divinely guided. Wherever he is, God is. He's in the secret place of the Most High, watched over by God and by God alone. How then could you be worried about your husband? So she was not worried about what she thought she was worried about. Her actual difficulty was that she had an inward sense of this insecurity which I mentioned, and was not in tune with the infinite. And with her own thoughts, she could get in tune with the infinite any moment she wanted to. Therefore, isn't that laziness? Uh, while talking to her, I was able to show her that she was the creator of her own worries. And she thereupon replaced her inner sense of security with a real feeling of security. I wrote out a special prayer for her to use. Anyone can use it. Emerson says, nothing will give you peace but the triumph of principles. And that's true. Here is the prayer. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's taken, of course, from the 91st Psalm, the great Psalm of protection. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. This is my own mind. All the thoughts entertained by me conform to harmony, peace, and goodwill. That's discipline. My mind is the dwelling place of happiness, joy, and a deep sense of security. All the thoughts that enter my mind contribute to my joy, peace, and general welfare. I live, move, and have my being in the atmosphere of good fellowship, love, and unity. All the people that dwell in my mind, the people that dwell in your mind are thoughts, ideas, images, feelings, emotional reactions, and so forth. All the people that dwell in my mind are God's children, meaning they're God's ideas. I am at peace in my mind with all the members of my family and with all mankind. The same good I wish for myself, I wish for my son and his family. I am living in the house of God now. I claim peace and happiness, for I know I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. She reiterated these truths frequently during the day, and these wonderful spiritual vibrations neutralized and obliterated the disease-soaked worry center in her subconscious mind, which is like a psychic wound, a festering traumatic wound. She discovered that there were spiritual reserves on which she could call to annihilate the negative thoughts as she saturated her mind with these wonderful spiritual verities, she became possessed by a deep faith in all things good, 
and she is now living in the joyous expectancy of the best. A banker recently asked me to give him a simple practical prayer to overcome his anxiety or worry. I suggested that every morning before the day's work he be alone and identify himself mentally and emotionally with these truths. I live, move, and have my being in God, and God is the life principle in you, and you know very well you're alive. And God is the progenitor, the father of all. So all religions of the world say our father. And he said, God lives, moves, and has his being in me. You know, that's a wonderful prayer. Did you ever say to yourself, I am the temple of the living God. God lives in me. You know, that's one of the greatest prayers you can use. So he continued by saying, I am immersed in the divine presence which surrounds me, enfolds me, and enwraps me. My mind is God's mind, for there is only one mind, and my spirit is the spirit of God. This infinite being within me is the only presence and the only power. It cannot be defeated, thwarted, or frustrated in any way. There is nothing to oppose it, challenge it, thwart it, neutralize it. It is almighty. It moves as unity. There are no divisions or quarrels in it. It is all-powerful and all-wise. It is present everywhere. As I unite mentally with this infinite power through my thoughts, I know I am greater than any problem. I grapple courageously with all difficulties and problems, knowing that they are divinely outmatched. And whatever strength, power, and creative ideas I need will automatically be given to me by the divine intelligence within me. I know the infinite lies stretched in smiling repose within me, where all is bliss, harmony, and peace. I am now in tune with the infinite, and as wisdom, power, and intelligence become active and potent in my life. This is the law of my being, and I know God's peace fills my soul. I know I can think of two things at the same time. I can bless my son and denounce him in the same breath. I can think of failure and dwell upon success at the same time in my mind. This is the law of your being, and then God's peace fills your soul. This banker understood what he was doing and why he was doing it. He said to me, as I affirm these truths, I imagine they are falling down from my conscious to my subconscious mind, and by a process of spiritual osmosis through every atom of my being. Every time I meet him in the bank, he tells me of some additional wonderful event in his life and those of his associates. He is calm, serene, poised, and balanced. He knows that the quiet mind gets things done. He knows you can think of two things at the same time. He knows that prayer is discipline, that when a fear or worry thought comes to your mind, you supplant it. If a thought of anger comes, you can say, God's peace fills my soul. Do you shovel out the darkness in your own home? No, you turn on the light, don't you? And the light dissipates the darkness, like the sun dissipates the mist. And darkness is absence of light. All you have to do is turn on the light in your own mind. You can say, I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. He covers me with his feathers, and under his wings shall I rest. The truth is my shield and buckler. Isn't that a wonderful thing to say? Isn't it a wonderful thing to affirm? Isn't it a marvelous thing to know? Isn't it a wonderful, wonderful thing to do, to practice it? Then all the worry will go away.